So I need to get this cockpit enclosure finished and back on the boat, don't I? The frame still needs a bit of polishing and we can carry on doing some of that on the boat. Uh, but we could do with doing some of the polishing here before we leave, the more inaccessible bits. And I've also got to get the lid ready to bolt onto this to transport. Now the lid's in here. And once this is on the boat, I can mount the solar panels and put the drainage holes and stuff like that in. I'm, I'm deliberately not doing that until it's on the boat. But I'm hoping to move it tomorrow. Uh, our car doesn't have a tow bar, so we're borrowing Sharon's car to tow it. Hence why this all has to happen on certain days. Um, but if I can move it tomorrow, get it installed on the boat, I want it in a position where the, the bulk of the work is done before we get it there. I'm always multitasking as you may have noticed, so while the epoxy and the paint on the enclosure roof is curing, I need to get on with the woodwork for the pieces I templated last week. The oak collar to go around the mast, the plinth for the anchor windlass, and while I'm at it I'll strip the old varnish from the washboards and start varnishing those as well. This Epiphanes varnish is incredible stuff, but it does take 10 coats to get a good finish, and you have to wait 24 hours between coats. So I'm getting this started now, even though they won't be ready to go back on the boat for several days.
I just want to interrupt the episode for one minute just to remind you that tickets are on sale now for my Come Back and Leave fundraiser concert, which I'm doing to raise money for our little sailing trip around the world. Uh, the gig is on April the 28th. So coming up in just a few weeks time at the Roadhouse in Sutton Coalfield. Now we've chosen the Roadhouse in Sutton Coalfield because it's fairly central in the UK. So whether you're from London or Cornwall or Scotland or Wales, it's relatively easy to get to. And we're doing the gig at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. So you've got all morning to get there and then all morning, all evening to get home. So you shouldn't need to get a hotel. Uh, so we try to make it as easy as possible. Now the venue, the Roadhouse, have said that we can have the venue for free and they will just take the money off the bar. But the proviso is that we've got to sell a minimum of 100 tickets uh, and let them know that we've cleared that threshold uh, at least two or three weeks before the date of the gig, which is completely understandable. So they know they've got at least some revenue coming in off the bar. So if you are thinking about coming, and you're thinking, oh, well, we'll buy the tickets nearer the time. Please go ahead and get them sooner rather than later so we clear that 100 ticket threshold. There's only 150 tickets available altogether. That's the capacity of the venue. So go ahead and get your tickets now if you can. The, the link in the description is to Eventbrite, which is the website which we're using to sell the tickets. And there's a link in the description that links also on our Facebook page. So please go ahead and book your tickets now. For those of you that um, can't make it or you're in alternative countries and you know around the other side of the world and what have you, uh, we are hoping to do a live stream a paid live stream of the event, but we're only going to set that up once we've crossed the 100 ticket threshold. Uh, not quite sure how we're going to do the live stream. We'll have to look at the technological uh, stumbling blocks for that, but I'm sure it's achievable. So uh, go over to Eventbrite by clicking the link in the description uh, and grab your tickets for the event, which is at the Roadhouse on the 28th of April, 2 p.m. in the afternoon. And it's gonna be a whole load of music from Dire Straits, from Brad Paisley, from Eva Cassidy, from Joe Satriani, from all kinds of bands that I've played in over the years with some of my favorite musicians that I've played with over the years. So it should be a really, really good evening. And I hope to see you there. Back to the episode then now. Now, one of the things I want to do, you can see that the design involves this area, which is the front, the front screen. I want to put a step here so that uh, if I want to reach the middle of the solar panel to clean it, or the, the roof to clean it, I can step up on this. And it also help make the structure a little bit more rigid. Um, unfortunately, the stainless steel that we bought uh, got used uh, by somebody on a different job and hasn't been replaced. So um, I'm having to use offcuts um, from other bits that I've salvaged uh, to finish off the solar arch. I was hoping to have got the, uh, the, stainless, steel, the stainless steel tubing that we originally bought replaced uh, by now, but that hasn't been replaced sadly. So, um, so I'm using scrap bits to finish this off, which is a real shame, but it'll be okay. So we've got this, um, this is a kind of a scotch bite drill polisher attachment. And the important bits to polish are the stuff that we can't get to once the roof is on. Because <laughs> other stuff we can polish with it on the boat. Because of course we're moving out of the house back onto the boat. So we need to get this shifted. Um, so we need to polish the bits here, which we can't get to once the roof is bolted on. And while Melissa's polishing, I'm going to start cutting down the other step for the other side.
The other tool that we've got here is a belt sander attachment for the grinder, which is absolutely fantastic. This actually belongs to Andy Darlington, you know, the guy with Whitehall. Um, but it's handy for because it kind of has got a tensioner belt and it takes the profile of the pipes, which makes it a lot easier to get things like welding spatter off. As you've seen, I've just MIG welded the two steps because I don't own a TIG welder. Uh, so there's occasionally you get a tiny bit of spatter, not a big deal, but this takes it straight off. Yeah, I think. Right, we're here. It's time to get this thing down the pontoon and I won't pretend I'm not a bit nervous about this. But look at this for a high tide. It's crazy. I've never seen it so high. It's the highest tide of the year. Here we are. Right, I'm gonna clamp this camera to the rail here. And I'm gonna pray that nobody steals it while we're putting the cockpit enclosure on. Where do you think? Here, I reckon.
Great, so the frame is all bolted down, that's fantastic. I'm going to change those bolts. I'm going to change them for dome head um, Allen key type ones, and I'm going to make some tapered washers. So if you, I'm just using the same bolts that I used when I originally constructed it. But I'm going to order some dome head ones uh, because they just, they look nicer and they're a little bit kinder if you stub your toe on them. So don't panic about that, but they might not arrive in this episode. Uh, the next thing that we've got to do is lift the actual lid on, haven't we? If we can try and get the back up onto the top. Oh, I see, yeah. Okay. Okay, right, if you want to go up. Okay. Can you get inside it? Oh, inside? In, in the cockpit. And then we'll just take it enough so that the weight's being taken by the frame. Yeah. All right, that would do. And then I can come up. And turn it round? Yeah. Okay. Can you get that foot? I'll go on the front. Okay. Yeah. One sec. Okay. Uh, yeah. One more. All right. Right. We're there. There are about. From the issue of the nuts and bolts, which I'm going to change, obviously, as I just said to dome heads, I haven't drilled the drain holes for the water catchment system. And the reason is I wanted to put it on the boat first to see where does the water actually pool under normal circumstances. And yes, I know the boat's going to tip and lean and that's going to change things. But under normal circumstances, under 90% of conditions when the boat's at anchor, where is most of the water going to end up in the track? Let's find out. So we're expecting this to leak because we haven't put any sealant or sycoflex around the bolt holes. But we're putting some water in this. People were worried about, oh, it'll be very, very heavy when it's full of water. Well, it'll never get full of water because as soon as the water gets down to here, which is where I thought it would be, where it's all pooling, it'll go straight through the drain hole and into our water tanks or just out onto the deck if the tanks are full. So, there you go. How cool is that? And it isn't actually dripping. So basically we want one drain hole right at the front, front and centre. Yeah. And I'll put one, I'll put one drain hole front and centre and I'll put one on the port side and one on the starboard side one on the port side and one on the starboard side, because then when we're healing, the water will drain out. And no, we won't be using that to catch water when we're, when we're 
out at sea sailing because there'll be too much salt spray and all that kind of stuff. It'll just be our protective sunshade and what have you when we're at sea. So this is just so that when we're at anchor, we can sweep it clean and catch water occasionally when we feel like it. And if it doesn't work, well, it doesn't matter. We've still got a roof. So as expected, there's a drip. I really need to polish those wells, don't I? But as I said, I wanted to get it here um, today because of the high tide and the no wind. So I can polish the welds on the boat, that's not a problem. But as expected, it is dripping, but that's because we haven't put any sealant. We've just bolted it in place and it's totally fine. It's not dripping in the boat. So let me just talk you through some of the features of this new cockpit enclosure that we've made. Now, of course, the main feature of it is to provide protection from the sun and the rain and the wind and the elements. Now, being sailors, of course, we like being outdoors. We love being outside and sailing. And in conditions, in most conditions, we'll have the sides off and we'll have lots of open air uh, to enjoy. But there are times when you're out at sea where you want to hunker down and uh, have some protection. And this will provide uh, really good protection for the whole family once it's got the canvas sides on and the front screen and stuff on. Now the second function of course is to hold our solar panels which I haven't fitted yet because that's going to be another a day I would think it take me to fit the solar panels. So that will provide us with about um, about six to eight hundred watts of solar to charge our batteries on the boat and the third and least important but quite nice part of the uh, design is the ability to catch water. Now people were saying oh your solar panels are going to be swimming in water. Well they're not because if you look this is the rain that we captured last night. It, it, if it gets any higher it'll just come over the lip at the front but what of course what I'm going to do is put drain holes in as I mentioned earlier and those drain holes will take water either off and into the sea so we won't get it pouring onto our lovely teak decks or when we want to and we've given it a nice clean swept any debris or nasties off there we can put a hose onto there and take it straight into our water tanks but do remember as i mentioned the water collection thing is just a, an added bonus if it doesn't work well it doesn't matter it still serves a perfectly good um, purpose as a cockpit enclosure and solar array and the water catchment system is just well if it works then great now what about the issue with the main sheet track the original design came way 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 too far back and it was built sort of in a bit of a rush uh, and the main sheet track which is here on the on the aft which is here on the aft cabin uh, was going to catch on the corners. So what I've done is I've moved the whole lot forward. So there's loads and loads and loads of clearance now. There's no way the main sheet's ever going to catch on that. That's never going to be an issue. And I've also left these areas open because I've yet to fabricate it. I've got an idea in my head of how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to have a telescopic section that slides out to protect the helm. Most of the time it's going to be forward uh, because I want to be able to sit here and see the top of the mast or sit here at the, at the wheel and I can still see, and I can still see the top of the mast look. So there's a, an unimpeded view of the top of the mast from the helm um, and from anywhere sitting on the cockpit combings. Uh, and most of the time this is going to be the configuration that we have, but there will be a section that clips in here or pulls out of here that we can put a, a canvas area over the back to fully enclose the cockpit when, again, when conditions are bad or when, we wanna, when it's raining a lot and we want to keep the cockpit really dry. You may remember when we were back in Dartmouth, uh, the old um, instruments had all been pilfered and stolen off this boat. Uh, so I had these uh, instruments that I bought off Mike. Uh, you remember Mike. Uh, thank you very much. And I uh, cobbled together this enclosure for our instruments. And a lot of people went, oh, that's a bit ugly. And you're right. But there's method in the madness because the idea eventually is going to be to have our chart plotter here and all of these instruments will actually go up here. I'm going to box this area in. Now we've tested that and the view forward is perfect through those front screens or I can get a view forward by looking over the top um, for when I want to get a really really good look forward or looking out the sides. So that's not an issue but these instruments are going to move I'm going to box that in here and put the instruments in a row up here. Um, a little bit like they are, I think, on Sailing Fair Isle. I think they've got their instruments in a similar place, but you see that on a lot of boats. So what's left to do on the cockpit enclosure to get it finished, finished, finished? Well, Melissa is going to come out and we'll have a little chat about that. So yeah, what is left to do? It doesn't really matter what order we do these things in. We've actually bought... The, the dome head bolts look. 
These are the dome head bolts. Ooh, I'm not fitting them today uh, because we need to publish this episode. So we're actually going to fit them either today or tomorrow, but you won't see them until next week because uh, we need to publish this episode. So I'm going to fit them and then you'll see them. But there's our dome head and we've got dome uh, nuts as well to go on. Obviously, once the bolts are in, then we can seal and sicker the bolt holes so that uh, they, we don't get drips in there. Um, the second thing that we've got to do... Is make the windscreen. The windscreen around the front and enclose this top section. I don't want to enclose the aft bit here because that's a really handy grab handle when you're getting in and out of the cockpit. But the front section is going to be all enclosed in acrylic or something like that. And as I say, the instruments are going to go across the front. The third thing will be... Solar panels, install and fit. Yeah, so the solar panels with the hinges and get those installed and wired up. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to be using Scanstrup glands for that, of course, just to make sure that the installation is nice and clean. And, and then, then I'll be on the sewing machine, uh, well, working out and then making an enclosure for yeah. this. We need to work out how um, how we're going to do the, um, the fabric sides, yeah. and also then the enclosure for the back bit. Yeah. Yeah. But basically, uh, the cockpit enclosure is kind of functional and done. Uh, the only bits that we're going to be doing is adding on extra, you know, screens and sides and that kind of thing. Uh, the steel work is done, the fibreglass work is done. Oh, you drop, dropped your ball, Ollie. So, thanks very much to Andy, of course, for popping down to help us put this on the boat. That was above and beyond the call of duty and made all the difference. Uh, thanks to you guys for watching. Thanks to our patrons for supporting us, as always. And thanks to anybody else that's donated through coffee or PayPal or Super Thanks and all that good stuff. See you next week, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.